In the last video, we talked about how the three types of minor scales are constructed. However, that is theoretical work and not very useful in real music, so this video would talk about how to identify minor keys and, most importantly, how to distinguish whether a piece is in major or minor. Major and minor keys sound different, and a good way to demonstrate this is contrasting the overworld theme from Super Mario World with the ghost house theme. Now, if you were to take a guess as to which one is major and which is minor, you would probably guess that the overworld theme is major and the ghost house theme is minor, and you would be right. In fact, the ghost house theme is the overworld theme, but slowed down and transposed into minor. The reason we can tell the difference is because of where the half steps are in the scale, and if you need a review of this, go ahead and rewatch the previous video about minor scales. The half step in question for this example is between so and lay in the ghost house theme. The overworld theme has so la, which is a whole step which matches what we know about the pattern of whole and half steps in the major scale. A half step between so and le is indicative of the pattern used in the minor scale. So often we can distinguish between major and minor orally, but what if you're just looking at notes on a page? Well, let's do a quick review of how to determine a key signature, and if this recap isn't enough, go check out the video about major keys. If we build a scale using the pattern we know, certain notes will need to be included for it to work. For example, let's try building a natural minor scale starting on C. Our pattern is whole half whole whole half whole whole, so let's fill in the notes. We end up with C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C again. Could a half step up from D have been called D sharp? Yes, but remember, when we're building scales, we want to use exactly one form of each pitch. So if we had used D-sharp, we would have two types of D and no instances of E, so E-flat works better. Now we can collect these alterations and display them once as the key signature, so we would have a key signature of three flats. Remember from the major keys video that flats and sharps must appear in a particular order, so that is why the key signature has B-flat, E-flat, and A-flat, even though in the scale they appear in a different order. Since we're on the topic, let's look back at the circle of fifths. We had previously only paid attention to the major keys, represented by the key signatures around the outside of the circle, but notice that this diagram also lists the minor keys in green on the inside of the circle. Let's find C minor with three flats. Incidentally, it's the exact same key signature as E flat major. But surely C minor and E flat major are two different keys, right? Yes and yes. While minor scales are not inherently derivative of major scales, there is a relationship that exists between major and minor keys. In fact, this relationship gives us the term to describe these. C minor and E flat major are relative keys of each other. This means that we can describe E flat major as the relative major of C minor, or C minor as the relative minor of E flat major. Relative keys share the same key signature, but have different tonic pitches. In case you need more convincing, let's try another one. Let's build a minor scale with B as tonic. If we fill in our pattern, we'll notice that we need two sharps to make it work, F sharp and C sharp. Once we move those over to the key signature, we can see that it looks exactly like the key signature of D major. Therefore, D major is the relative major of B minor, or B minor is the relative minor of D major. If you want to be able to switch back and forth a little faster, there is a trick you can use. If you're starting in major, then the sixth scale degree will be the tonic of the relative minor. If you're starting in minor, then the third scale degree will be the tonic of the relative major. But let's look back at our Mario example for a minute because something else is happening in these examples. We don't necessarily feel like we're in a different key, it's just minor. This is because both examples share the same tonic pitch, but use a different key signature. In fact, the overworld theme uses tonic G and the key signature for G major, while the ghost house theme uses tonic G and the key signature for G minor. These are called parallel keys. They have the same tonic pitch, but different key signatures. G minor is the parallel minor to G major, and G major is the parallel major to G minor. So this is all well and good, but how are you supposed to know what key something is if you just see the music? It's sort of like figuring out a puzzle. You need to absorb all the information you can to reach your answer. There are a few tips and tricks to identifying keys. The first and most helpful is to look at the key signature. This will narrow down your options in a lot of instances. Let's start by looking at the iconic Tetris theme. You may already know that this is in minor, but we can use it as an example to learn how to tell what key it is. So for the sake of practice, pretend you don't already know how this song goes. 
There's nothing in the key signature, so using our handy circle of fifths guide tells us that our options are either C major or A minor, and a 50-50 choice ain't bad. Now, other people may advise at this point to look at the first and last notes, but I would say be wary of that, especially if you're looking at soundtracks. Very often, composers delay the appearance of tonic at the beginning, and because the track is meant to loop, it often doesn't appear at the end either. We can still try it though, because it may yield information. The first chord is an E major chord, but we know that the key of E major has four sharps, and there's a noticeable lack of sharps here, with the exception of one. But there's no key with just G sharp, right? Here's where it helps to know your scales. If the key signature could be C major or A minor, then this G sharp is really, really informative, because it's the leading tone in A minor. And what scale looks like natural minor but with a raised leading tone? That's right, the harmonic minor scale. So this G sharp clears up the question between C major and A minor. A raised leading tone in harmonic minor is way more likely than a raised scale degree 5 in major. Let's try another one. Jeremy Soule's theme for Skyrim. Let's start where the melody enters. A key of two sharps can mean either D major or B minor. Where you look beyond that will vary depending on the style of the music you're looking at. Since this theme is so bass heavy, that's probably a helpful place to look. Are there any accidentals to help guide our thinking? Not this time, what we see is what we get. So what about the bass line? It starts on B, so that's a strong indicator, and at the end of the first phrase, it ends on B. This points pretty clearly to this being in B minor. Now this process is far from foolproof because lots of songs change keys in the middle, and a very popular compositional trick is to start in minor and then modulate to the relative major, and that's not even getting into all the modes that a piece could be in. Regardless of all that, hopefully this was a useful video for where to start, how to recognize major versus minor, and understanding the difference between the two. I'll see you next time.